All right there, people, this is Brad the Lab back again with another video. And today we're going to be doing my Premier League table predictions for how this season is going to go. Apologies, apologies for any background noise that you may hear. So, the Premier League 2022-2023 has arrived. I've been probably a big, big football fan for 10 years now. Because I started getting into it when I was about, what, 10? So, let's get into the predictions of this season. So, bottom of the league, I've gone with Bournemouth. Bournemouth have made three signings. To be fair, I was actually quite confident. I had to change it a little bit based on the signings. I made some early predictions. Um... I changed some at the bottom, um, but Bournemouth for me, I, I actually thought they would survive because they are they were an established Premier League club. Obviously, they did go down, but Scott Parker doesn't have a great record. Of course, he, he's been relegated twice as a manager. Um, the first time, you could probably say it's a bit unfair to say that because Fulham did look pretty much doomed in the 2018-19 season when they were managed by Claudio Ranieri. Um, but yeah, um, he took Fulham back up and then they went back down. Bournemouth could be possibly another yo-yo club. I don't know how Scott Park is going to manage this. He's not got a great record as a manager in the Premier League. But good luck to Bournemouth. I really do wish that they do well. Um, I've got nothing against them, but I think they will struggle. They made three signings. I think Marcus Tavernier is a really good... Uh, is a really good addition. They've signed Ryan Fredericks on a free and Joe Rothwell from Blackburn. Again, I don't really know much about Joe Rothwell, to be honest. Ryan Fredericks is a player that does like to get forward. Is he one of the quickest defenders? I'm not so sure. They could It could leave them with a lot of gaps open in the back. I think Bournemouth could struggle. In 19th place, I've gone with Fulham. Now... Marco Silva, I'm not his biggest fan. It's it's nothing personal, it's just his record as a Premier League manager. He's made he's made a few signings. Um I think he's uh you know he's brought in Andreas Pereira from United. Um he's also brought in uh Mbabu at right back. They could be signing Burnt Leno, but again, I don't really He's, he's never taken any of his previous Premier League clubs anywhere exciting. Obviously, Fulham's main ambition will be to be avoiding relegation. But he's a very inconsistent manager, Marco Silva. I could see him possibly losing his job. Um, I don't think he suits the Premier League. I think he's a good championship manager. I just don't think he's well suited for the Premier League. He could well prove me wrong. I've got nothing against him personally. It's just, yeah... I just don't think, I'm just not very confident that Fulham will survive. In 18th place, I've gone with Leeds. Okay, Leeds fans are going to call me biased. They're going to call me a prick. Uh, any other insults? Uh, yeah, well, basically, the fact that they just about avoided relegation on the last day of the season uh, get away to Brentford. They have made uh, a few signings, Rocker, Aronson, Christensen, uh, a right back, not the one from Chelsea, from Salzburg. Um, but yeah, Jesse Marsh, I think you know his team had uh, played very, very aggressively and uh, the discipline record isn't particularly the best. I don't know if they're going to have the... Um, I don't know if they're going to have enough to stay in the Premier League this time. They might prove me wrong. They might finish in the in the Champions League places. They might do a bloody Leicester. Who knows? Um, but for me, I think Leeds, for me, are going down. It's a very difficult one. I think it could go to the last day of the season again. 17th place, I've gone with the final newly promoted side, Nottingham Forest. Forest have made 12 signings. Now... I actually said Forest have finished bottom because of their lack of experience in the Premier League. 
in, in modern times. Obviously, they haven't been in the Premier League since 99. And uh, Steve Cooper, he does like to develop young players. Obviously, he's brought in uh, Jesse Lingard. I don't know how that's going to impact the squad. Maybe that could be a bit of a fault because if he's been paid 200, 200k, that's just going to like, I don't know, sort of like put him above everybody else in the team, really. You know, but I think everybody will be looking to him. He's a quality player. I do wish Jesse all the best, but I think Nottingham Forest will have enough to stay in the Premier League. Come on, Forest. In 16th place, I've gone with Southampton. Now, Southampton are a team that have been backed to possibly be relegated this season. Uh, they've been in the Premier League for 10 years now. Um, and uh, it, it's fair to say, since the year, the 16 17 season, they've tailed off a lot. Claude Puel, Maurizio Pellegrino, Mark Hughes, um, and Hassan Hootel came in. He's not really taking them anywhere. Again, he's a bit like Marco Silva in a way. Very inconsistent uh, as a manager. I don't think... He's always had the, you know been able to keep them up. But they've also had that uh, dreaded scoreline. 9-0. So, Southampton. Of course, James Ward-Prowse will be key for them. The strikers are not particularly uh, filming with a lot of optimism ahead of the season um, Adams and Armstrong good championship players but maybe not great Premier League players and I think that could be quite a, quite a dam damaging factor uh, in this situation so for me I am going to say so for me I am going to say that uh Southampton are going to finish 16th. Could Ralph Hassenhutl possibly lose his job? I think it's a possibility. They signed Arebo from Rangers. They signed uh, Sekumara. I haven't heard of any of these players. Uh, Liss from Altai. Kotchap. Lavia, the youngster from Man City. Bazunu. Iremene. I I really don't have a lot of confidence in the Saints. So, 16th place. Okay, in 15th place, I've gone with Everton. Everton avoided relegation last season towards the back end of the campaign. Frank Lampard did a really good job. There was a lot of twists and turns. Uh, the loss of Richarlison could be quite a factor. They've had uh, some rubbish results in pre-season. Um, obviously losing to teams like Minnesota, 4-0. Uh, losing to Arsenal uh, as well. Which can happen, they've got a quality side, Arsenal. They've brought in James Tarkovsky from Burnley. I think that's a good signing. Dwight McNeil. Again, I've always seen him as a possible uh, Everton signing. Um, you know even when it was at Burnley, and they signed Ruben Vinagre from uh, Sporting Lisbon on loan. I actually think, you know, obviously he's got Premier League experience, so they've got players who've got Premier League experience within them. So, I don't know if they're going to make any signings from now. We'll have to find out. But for me, Everton are going to finish 15th in the Premier League. Because their club has also tailed off massively from the standards that they usually show. Okay. In 14th place, I've gone with Wolves. Now, Wolves are a team that uh, obviously are a, are a club that want to qualify for European football. And possibly be playing Champions League football in the near future. But their form towards the back end of last season can have an effect going into a new season. And their form was pretty damn dreadful, if you look at it. So, for me, they, they had some really rotten results. Um, they had some really, really rotten results. 
towards the back end of last season. Um, they were winless in May. Their last win came on the 2nd of April against Aston Villa. They went on to lose to Newcastle, to Burnley, to Brighton. Drew 2-2 at Chelsea, which is a decent result. Lost 5-1 to City. Obviously, that can happen. Drew 1-1 with relegated Norwich. And then lost to Liverpool on the last day. Again, that can happen. But, obviously, that bad form can, take, can go into a new season and be quite effective. Wolves, they've only made one signing. Which is uh, Nathan Collins from... Uh, from Burnley, of course. And a lot of players, they have released a lot of players. I don't know if they're going to bring in any more. But for me, I think that... Um, but for me, I think that Wolves will have a very, very dull mid-table finish. Okay, in 13th place, I've gone with Brentford. Now, Brentford have made some good signings. I think Aaron Hickey is a very, very good addition to the squad. Obviously, they did lose Christian Eriksen, of course. He was there on a six-month deal. Um, but what I will say is um, about Brentford, I think they are going to be an established Premier League club. There is also that, that little fear of possibly being... Uh, in second season syndrome where they struggle and that does happen but I don't think that will happen with Brentford they've got Keen Lewis Potter from Hull City they've got Ben Mee from Burnley um, and uh, I think they've got enough in the tank to secure a mid-table finish could they finish any higher could they be in the top half who knows what their future will hold but for me I think Brentford We'll get a 13th place finish. I think their fans will be quite happy about that. In 12th place, I've gone with Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace had a very, very good season last season under Patrick Vieira. I think it'll just be a very, very stable season. Obviously, they might win a season when they finish in the top half. Um, I think it's all about stability. They signed Chris Richards from Bayern Munich. Um... Obviously, they've got the quality players. Wilfred Zaha, I can't see him going anywhere uh, at this current point in time. They've signed Sam Johnston on a free deal. He's a very good goalkeeper, by the way. Uh, Malcolm Eberwe, Um I think he chose Palace over United. I think that is kind of understandable at t uh, with the current state we're in. And Czech Decore, I've never seen him play, but I've heard some good things about him. Uh, but Palace, for me, I can't see them competing for Europe. I can't see them in any relegation danger. So, for me, I think Crystal Palace will finish 12th. 11th place is Brighton. Brighton had a really good season, like Crystal Palace did last season, I think. I remember when they drew 0-0 with Leeds last season and the fans are booing. They play exceptional football. They, you know... They were eighth place at that point, you know, and uh, yeah, they absolutely, you know, battered Manchester United, which was a, a disgraceful performance from United. Um, but yeah, well, that's another matter. But Brighton, they always seem to sign players. Again, that we've never really heard of. They come to United for the first game of of the season. Um, they had a decent ending. Uh, they could have won three on the bounce. Of course, Leeds scored in the very last minute. Uh, they beat United 4-0. They beat West Ham on the last day. They had some pretty decent results. They beat teams like Tottenham, went to an Arsenal, went to Anfield uh, and got a result. Uh, got a draw there. So, yeah, you know, Brighton are a good side. And... Uh, I don't think they're going to be up there. I think there's been a lot more money spent uh, this time around than there was last. But yeah, I think a solid 11th place finish for uh, Brighton. In 10th place, I've gone with West Ham. Sole reason is uh, the Conference League. 
again, I, I just don't think they're going to do it this time around. I think they're going to struggle a little bit um, to reach to those standards where they were um, under under David Moyes, of course. I think, again, they have made some good signs. They signed Ariola on a permanent deal. They signed uh, Skamaka. Um, I've heard fans are quite excited about him. Uh, Flynn Downs, we've got uh, Nea Vegard as well. Uh, Patrick Kelly, I've never heard of him before, but good luck to him. And uh, But yeah, I think West Ham, solely just because of the Conference League, I think it'll be a bit of a, a, bit of a, um, a struggle for them to mix it up with the Premier League as well. Okay, into ninth place, and I've gone with Leicester. Leicester didn't have a particularly great season last season. They're the only club that haven't made a signing yet, which is quite bizarre. I'm sure Brendan Rodgers will be quite uh, frustrated with that, that they haven't managed to bring players in. The Foxes, of course, they've been a team competing for Europe and they've they were in the Conference League semi-finals last year, but they obviously they did get knocked out, and the Premier League results weren't fantastic. Um, it was a bit of a a below par season for them. I think it's going to be a tricky season, and I'm going to say ninth. In eighth place, I've gone with Aston Villa. Now Villa. I think people can forgive me for putting Villa in eighth. I think the signings of Diego Carlos and uh, signing Coutinho on a permanent deal. Um, I think uh, their squad is pretty damn decent. They've signed Bubakar Kamara um, as well. You know, adding those key players, Steven Gerrard does mean business. He's taken the captaincy of Tyra Mings and given it to John McGinn. I don't know if that's going to work for them. But um, all the best to to Villa, um, and yeah, I think I think they can have a pretty good season if they want to be competing for European places again in the future, like they used to do. So yeah, I think Aston Villa will finish eighth. In seventh place, I've gone with the richest club in the world, Newcastle United. Now this will be a very very good achievement for Eddie Howe to get Newcastle into Europe. It might be the Conference League, but look at the signs that they've got Botman at the back. And I think, you know, they, they had a very good ending to last season and they can carry that momentum into the new season. Like I said about Wolves having bad momentum, Newcastle can bring that good momentum because they are capable of doing some good things, um, of course. Apparently Newcastle have been in... In, uh, are interested in Timo Werner I don't know if that's going to happen um, we'll find out Nick Pope very very good signing Burnley have uh, got rid of a lot of their star players who have kept them in the Premier League season in season out Matt Target signed on a permanent deal as well I think Newcastle I think Newcastle if they can uh, keep up those standards as they had last season and they can carry on that good form. I think they can definitely get into Europe. Sixth place, Manchester United. Yeah. Um, remember last season when I said we'd win the league? Yeah. Um, didn't quite happen. We got knocked out of the FA Cup by Middlesbrough. Got slaughtered nearly every single week by teams like Brighton, Watford, Liverpool, Manchester City. Anymore? Um... Yeah, um, Manchester United, of course, with the new manager, Eric Ten Hag. Again, there still seems to be that defensive frailty at the back where we just seem to concede a lot of goals. And uh, against uh, Rio Valenco, I don't think we were fantastic. Lissandro Martinez is a fantastic signing for us. Christian Eriksen, I'm really hoping he becomes one of my favourite players this season. And Tyrrell Malakia as well from left back. I don't know if we're going to bring any more signings in. But it is a big, big task for Ten Hag. I don't think he's going to have an instant impact by firing us into the top four. I really hope he does. I really, really hope 
we end the season well. I'd like to win a trophy. I'd take third and winning the FA Cup. I know we used to mock Arsenal fans for that. Um, you know, well, I wasn't really one of them, but there was a lot of United fans that did. And I'd take that for a year or two, to be honest, or two, you know, for two or three years and then build a way up. We don't know if Ronaldo's staying or not. Who, who's going to take Ronaldo? Doesn't seem anybody wants him at the moment. He doesn't want to beat United. He doesn't... Uh, Atletico Madrid don't want him. There's a lot of clubs that are just struggling. You know, he's just struggling in his current predicament. I think it's because of his age as well. Yeah. So, I don't know what's going to go on. We've got uh, rid of a few of the, the bad eggs at the club. I think Pogba... I think Cavani was one of them. Um, Jesse Lingard... Uh, Juan Mata's a good guy. Uh, Nemanja Matic. We still need a CDM, but we just don't seem to learn. So, yeah, for me, I think Manchester United are going to finish sixth place. I just don't we're in the bloody Europa League. If that's anything to go by. Fifth place, Chelsea. Chelsea, I'm a bit worried about them. I don't think Thomas Tuchel's going to last this season. Um, they have made Sterling. They have brought Sterling in, which is a really good signing. <coughs> Excuse me. And Kaladu Koulibaly. And Amari Hutchinson from Arsenal. Um, so, those three players. I think Koulibaly could keep the goals out. I think he's a very, very good centre-back. He's signed on a four-year deal. Although he's in, he is into his early 30s. They missed out on players like Rafinha and Kunde. I don't know how Barcelona have managed to get hold of them. I really don't know. Um, but for me, I think Sterling and Koulibaly, I think Sterling will help their attack a lot. They've lost Lukaku, who's gone out on loan to Inter Milan. They need a striker. I... Before City were going to sign Haaland, I thought Chelsea would have been a good contender to sign him. So he always managed to pull something out of the bag. But, of course, this isn't the Abramovich era anymore. That's been and gone. Um, Todd Bowley, of course, you know, what what is he going to demand? Is he is he going to give Tuchel time? Is he going to give him the whole season? Who knows? But things just seem really bad at Chelsea at the moment. Um, they're... Uh, the manager, of course, has called the players out. They lost 4-0 to Arsenal. I think they could struggle. It's just not been a great summer for Chelsea. Chelsea fifth place. In fourth place, I've gone with the mighty Gunners to make a return to the Champions League. Arsenal and Mikel Arteta have made some impressive signings and they want more signings. They've signed Marquinhos from Sao Paulo. Never seen him play. Fabio Vieira. Uh, Matt Turner, of course, was a, a pre-negotiated contract. Uh, Gabriel Jesus. What an incredible signing that is. And Zinchenko as well. Um, two really good signings there. Zinchenko and uh, Jesus, of course, have worked with Mikel at Manchester City. And... Uh, I think Mikel Arteta, I think his team will learn from their lessons. I remember when Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher were saying Arsenal are done, they're going to really, really struggle next season. Um, that was their biggest opportunity that they'll, that they'll have. And they thought Arsenal were, were done. I don't think they are. I think they mean business and I think Arsenal have the right to be excited to possibly make their first Champions League appearance since 2017. And, uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows what can happen? I think um, Arsenal will have enough to finish in those uh, European, uh, the elite European places um, and be playing teams like Bayern Munich again. Just hope they don't get some 5-1 here. In third place, I've gone with Tottenham. Tottenham have to finish in the top four. 
They have to. And I think they have to win a trophy. We do say this season in, season out. But this is Antonio Conte's first full season. And look at these signings that they made. Ivan Perisic, quality play from Inter Milan. Basuma, I think a lot of clubs will be envious that he's gone to Spurs. Richarlison, who's left Everton, of course. Dejed Spence, who was a very good player at Nottingham Forest on loan last season. Clement uh, Lenglet from Barcelona. Um, yeah, the, there's also Fraser Forster. He's a very good goalkeeper, by the way. Uh, Tyrrell Ashcroft, never really heard of him before. But, um, but yeah, and Josh Keeley as well. I think they're going to be academy players. But still, like I say, this is, um, you know, Spurs have to do something. I think Conte will. I think he will deliver something. I think he... I think he could deliver the FA Cup to Tottenham this year. I think he can. I think they have to. This has got to be the year where they end that trophy drought. Ten years ago, they had players like uh, Tom Huddleston. Um, no disrespect, Tom. Uh, Michael Dawson. Um, Asua Koto, Brad Friedel. But this Spurs team is huge quality. And for me, I think Spurs will finish third place. I, they'll be the closest team to those top two, Liverpool and City. In second place, I've gone with the champions, Manchester City. Yes, they've got Erling Haaland in. And, uh, you know, but... It's a hard one either way, if you're a Manchester United fan, because... Manchester United are the only team in Premier League history, if I'm not mistaken, to win the Premier League uh, a hat-trick of Premier League titles in a row. Um, 2007, 2008, 2009. If City win it, City level that record. If Liverpool win it, they win their 20th league title. Erling Haaland, is he going to be... Is he going to be the man... To deliver all the goals for Manchester City. Obviously they've got so a big crop of players. And they managed to win the league without a striker last season. Um, you know, they, they are a magnificent side. Of course, against Liverpool. Of course, they made mistakes. It was the Community Shield. It is pre-season. It is going to be really, really tight. But... When Liverpool have missed out on a narrow Premier League title win, like in the 18-19 season, they went on to win the league the following year. And um, City, for me, yeah, I, I don't know. It's possible. It's very, very possible with with Erling Haaland up there. Is Pep going to play? I don't know. I'm not sure what to expect from Manchester City this season. Um, they might have a bit of an off-season. They, they never, you know, to their standards, they usually are quite high. Obviously, they've got uh, Calvin Phillips in as well. Um, obviously, losing the players like Sterling and Fernandinho and Jesus. It's quite a bit of building to do there for Manchester City. They're going to bring in more signings. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But people might put City at the top because Erling Haaland, because of that. But he could be facing a new challenge with Premier League defenders. So, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so City, second place. And the winners of the Premier League... Liverpool are going to win the 20th league title. Jurgen Klopp, yes, he might have lost Sadio Mane, but he's still got that big crop of players, the, the team that he can rotate. I know Liverpool have had a bit of a bad pre-season, but that's pre-season. You know, I think we've we've judged these players, Nunes, Haaland, way too early. You know, obviously... Um, but... I have to say, um, Liverpool. Liverpool for me, they just, they just have that. Uh, I just think Jurgen Klopp 
of course, they nearly, they could have done a quadruple. I'm sure they'll be hurting that they didn't do it because that team was very, very much capable of doing it. And I think it will just give them more and more desire to go to go for it. And I think Jurgen Klopp, of course, he has lost a couple of key players, Mane and Origi. But I do think Liverpool just might have just might have the edge this time to do it. That's why I'm uh, picking them to to go and win the Premier League title ahead of Manchester City. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these predictions, and if you've got any uh, ideas and thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. This has been Brad the Lad. See you all in a bit.